Ever since I made the last video, there has been a numerous amount of comments from people suggesting that instead of using butane, I should be using alcohol. So that's why I decided that in this video, I was going to try and make an alcohol carburetor for the 3D printed gas engine. Now alcohol can be some pretty nasty stuff, it tends to destroy a lot of different polymers. I'd read a bunch of different sources and a lot of them had said, you know, PTG doesn't work with alcohol, PTG is fine, other ones are saying things like nylon is the safest, nylon is, you know, the bad one to use. And it was really inconclusive, I didn't really know where to go. So I decided I was going to set out and find my own answers. For this experiment, I rounded up three different types of plastics. I rounded up a piece of PLA, PTEG, and nylon. I actually found this steel mug and I'm going to use this as the reservoir. The test was simply going to be me just putting them inside of a container with some alcohol in it, and then we we're going to leave it overnight, and then observe if any changes had happened to the plastics. Oh god, that splashed everywhere. I sealed it to prevent any kind of evaporative loss, and then we're going to check on it tomorrow and see how the parts look. It's the next day, and I'm going to remove it from the alcohol. Let's see how they look. Oh shit. It didn't seem like there was anything different about the PLA or the PTEG. However, the nylon was a different story. I think it's softer. Yeah. It's like spongy. The only one of these three parts that actually kind of, I think, underwent any kind of change is the nylon. It just feels a little softer. The PTEG is exactly how I left it, and same with the PLA. So, uh, sure. I thought it was really interesting because it seems like the one that I thought would have been the safest, the nylon, actually seemed to be the only one that underwent any kind of change. The other ones were the exact same as when I put them in, to be honest. This is some pretty good news, actually, because I really don't like printing with nylon. Every time I print with it, unless it's a large-scale part, it tends to make kind of a stringy mess. So I'm actually kind of relieved that I can use PTEG for the rest of this project. This is one I had made before I did the experiment, when I was still under the apprehension that nylon was the best to use. And you can see when I blow some air through it, it does pick up the water and it carries it out. Now of course this would be a really boring video if that was the only thing I had to deal with. Of course this doesn't actually work. Now even though it did carry it out and it blew it on the paper, most of the water just pooled at the bottom. The problem lies in the diameter of the venturi. The smaller the venturi, the more fuel it's going to carry through, and the bigger, the less. It's really hard to do this kind of thing because we're working on such a small scale and with also really low tolerance, uh, you know, production. Now I needed a sort of easy solution that I could, you know, change on the fly. And I thought of this idea, so did Ford. Now I'm actually reading these from the Nissan patent, but it's pretty much the same idea. The idea at its core works because of the piston that moves up and down to change the venturi. By adding a sort of cylinder on the top of the jet, we can adjust its height. By adjusting its height, it actually adjusts the uh, amount of air that's going to be flowing over the jet. This makes it really easy to uh, kind of fine tune and dial it down to exactly what we need. For the assembly, I decided that I was going to use JB Quick Weld, and because it has really good chemical resistance and it makes a really strong bond. Although it's also some pretty nasty stuff, this isn't something that you want to use in a closed room, so make sure you have at least a window cracked, or else you'll see some pretty funny things. I've JB welded the carburetor, now it's time to let it dry. I've modified the existing head to accept a larger carburetor, but I've also done the exact same to the other side. What I've done is I've actually made a larger exhaust port, so in the future I could add maybe an exhaust or something like that. I forgot to do all my syncing claps, so syncing the audio is going to be a lot of fun. I want to show you something interesting about both the bearings and these rods. When I put the rod inside of the bearing, even though they're perfectly machined to fit together, as you can see there is still a lot of play, and this is coming from the bearing itself. Adding a second bearing to it fixes the problem only a little bit. But the important thing is watch what happens when I space them apart. Once I space it apart, the problem almost entirely goes away. And this is something that I would utilize in the engine block itself. I realized that the really heavy flywheel that I had just put on it was putting a lot of havoc on that one bearing. 
When I've added a second bearing to the block, you can see that the flywheel hangs on really nicely, and it spins pretty good too. We live in a world where people like Elon Musk are trying to connect our brains to the internet. We can interact with the Neuralinks simply by pairing them to an iPhone. So why am I still pull starting this thing if I could just start it with a drill? The drill starter will not only make it spin faster, which will help it start, but I can also spin it for as long as I need to. I think we're now finally ready to do the first test, and I'm going to do it with some alcohol. I've wired it back up again, and as you can see, we still have spark. I'm like 95% sure that this is literally going to catch on fire. Didn't do anything. What if I add more choke? I tried testing it on butane. I thought it was strange that it wouldn't even kick over on the butane, which it worked just fine before. That's when I started to realize that the compression had gotten a lot worse after the alcohol test. This is probably because I didn't realize that I was using TPU for the valves, which is probably really bad against alcohol. The valves actually began to disintegrate and we had lost all of the compression. So as you can see here, this head is a piece of and it doesn't actually work that well. I spent some time experimenting with new types of valves. I had made ones out of PTEG, I had made ones out of nylon. What I realized though is that silicone is really good against alcohol. So what I decided to do was just make valves entirely out of one piece of silicone. They provide a really good seal and also they're resistant to the alcohol, like two things that we actually really need. I've gone ahead and made a lot of new parts to help with the compression issue. Now not only have I gone ahead and made a new piston, I've also gone ahead and made a new connecting rod. The new connecting rod I made is actually a little bit shorter. What was happening is that it was increasing the pressure in the chamber, which made the air leak out even faster. By having a slightly lower compression ratio, even though the compression ratio is, you know, lower, uh, the pressure inside the chamber is also lower, which means it will leak out slower. So there is actually a little bit more compression with a lower compression ratio. In this case, this seemed to be the best idea to go with. So I've set it up again with the carburetor this time. You can clearly hear it has a lot more compression when it's turning over. Which is great, except for the fact that it still isn't running. But this time, once I take the butane torch and blow it right into the intake while it's cranking over, you can actually hear that it is firing, although very, very weakly. Ooh, that was cool. Now because of how well the butane torch seemed to work, this gave me a new idea. The little contraption that you're looking at right now is called a T-Venturi. My plan is to blow the butane right into the cylinder of the engine, similar to how we were doing that with the torch. A quick test proves that this works, as you can see, uh, although there is a bit of a greenish hue, which means it's running a little bit lean, but that isn't a big deal, it should work just fine. But this time there's a lot more fuel, and hopefully this will actually generate some results.
I tried to pull the drill away while starting it to see if it would kick over. Now unfortunately after extensive testing, it still doesn't run, but that doesn't mean that all hope is lost. The engine has never looked better, in fact it looks much better than what it did an entire year ago. I started this project last year with little to no knowledge about how any of this would come together, but now we have sort of a foundation at which we can experiment for. We've solved compression issues, we've solved ignition issues, and we have a, you know, a good fundamental body to work with. The only thing to work with now is just the fuel system. But I've also used what I've learned from this project into some other projects. For example, making air engines where I need to have high compression. Using the sort of overing piston design that I've been using with the copper sleeves is extremely useful. Anyways, until next time, thanks for watching.